So this is just a short demo of the pipeline project, which you've hopefully, hopefully read and uh, understood in the blog post. As you can see, I have just the master branch set up and the standard SDF project structure. We have a grand total of one suite script in our uh, file cabinet folder. It's a suite lit and it's basically doing nothing. We've also included the corresponding script object, which is currently undeployed in the account. So the is deployed flag is set to false. If we just view the script in, inside my test account here, you could see that this is the exact same script and it's undeployed. So this is what we'll be using to, to demonstrate the release process. So that's the project structure. One, one word about the setup inside GitLab. So as I mentioned, right now we just have one master branch. The idea is to combine GitLab branches with a NetSuite account. So in practice, you would usually have the master branch, let's say, pointing to your NetSuite production account and possibly a, a sandbox or a staging branch, which would deploy to your NetSuite sandbox. In this demo, we've just, we just have one branch, which is pointing to my test account. And as you might know, when deploying using SDF, you need to configure uh, credentials objects for, for SDF to authenticate against the account. That's done using uh, some tokens, which you need to, to generate. And I've actually stored these in the GitLab CICD uh, environment variables section. So standard SDF uh, authentication goes something like the realm. You have a, a token secret. And I've actually named them according to the, let's say, branch NetSuite account uh, combination. So here you have the realm, which is related to your master branch, i.e. production and the same for, for the secret and the token. So this is what the pipeline will use to, to dynamically associate your uh, target branch with the NetSuite account. That's actually being done in a helper file in the project called SDF auth. So whenever you create a merge request into the uh, target, target branch, so GitLab would expose that through some environment variables. In our case, this would be master. So as you can see, we're just accessing uh, those environment variables and then using nodes uh, child process module to to spawn a shell and run the sdf command which is actually authenticating against the target account so that's as far as let's say dynamic sdf authentication goes one other feature worth mentioning is the merge train feature so gitlab allows you to let's say have tight control over the deployment pipeline. It, it, it exposes a couple of triggers for you to, to run different pipeline logic. So if I show the, the CICD config, you could see that I have two stages called validate and deploy. The validate stage is going to be triggered whenever we open a merge request. And the deploy is going to be triggered whenever we merge the merge request. You know, they're, they're essentially, they're pretty much identical. The only thing is that the, the validate pipeline is using NetSuite's dry run uh, feature, which is basically simulating the SDF deployment without actually deploying the code, whilst the deploy stage is, is deploying for real. Um, so we also have a couple of NPM scripts, which is facilitating this whole process. So as I mentioned, we'll have one pipeline trigger upon opening a new merge request and the other one uh, upon actually merging the merge request. So let's dive into a quick demo. I'm just gonna modify one of the scripts with a new log. And I'm actually going to set the suite to to be actually deployed. So if we see what's been modified, we see that we have two files modified. We'll just add and commit everything. By the way, I'm actually on a branch, feature branch called feet one. So we're just gonna push to the branch. So we're back over to GitLab, we should see that we've pushed to a new feature branch called feet one. 
you can just say feature changes and most importantly we can inspect what's changed from the, the new log which we've added and we're actually setting the is deployed flag to true so we create the merge request this is going to trigger again the validate pipeline and that's actually being specified in, in the variable section there's an environment variable which determines which detects the actual uh, merge request action so to speak so merge result is basically when the merge request has been opened so we see that we have a pipeline running it's the validate stage so now what what's really happening under the hood is that we are we're going to dynamically create the deploy xml file based on the git diff so so essentially the difference between the source branch which is the feature feed one branch and the target branch which is master so there are a few steps in the pipeline you can see that i'm uh, running our tests first these are simply the tests which ship with the sdf just boilerplate they're just a standard test which are running so it's just for, for demonstration purposes so that was successful then we're running uh, an npm script called deploy file which as you can see is generating the the difference between the feature branch and the master branch which would be our the changes that we've just made so here you can see the modified scripts are being logged and then we're essentially creating the deploy.xml file based on this difference so you can see that the suitelet file has been placed in the file section its object in the object section that file is created and then we're running this npm uh, script called validate which performs a sequence of steps so you could see that it triggers the the authentication script which i showed earlier it adds the project dependencies it validates against the target account and it attempts to soft deploy uh, the entire project so this this would catch deployment errors which, which sometimes arise um, on deployment and, and which are not actually detected at uh, validation stage so the authentication was successful we've created an, an auth object validating the project so validation was successful and the deployment preview also was successful you could see that in when we actually come to deploy this is actually what what sdf is going to try and deploy to, to the nesuit account so if we go back to the merge request we could see that the pipeline was successful as a result of that it's ready to be merged if it was unsuccessful then we, we would not be able to to merge this feature into master and we need to fix it and and rerun the pipeline so simply pushing to the feature branch would, would re-trigger this uh, validate pipeline and so we're pretty much ready, uh, ready to to deploy this feature to the next week account so we could merge the merge request again this would now trigger the deploy stage which is running we're using a, a docker image which has everything sdf needs to to run namely um, node and the jdk it's also ha it also has the um, sdf for node actually built into the image itself and before each pipeline we're, we're running npm ci to install some dependencies which are needed for the uh, unit tests with jest so again the, the deploy stage is identical to, to the validate so we're running the tests again we are invoking the script which generates the deploy xml dynamically passing in the the git diff as uh, command line arguments we're, we're also filtering out any non uh, sdf related scripts so we're, we're only actually deploying uh, NetSuite suite scripts and objects here's the deploy which was generated and again we do exactly the same thing but we actually omit the dry run flag and just deploy for real so as you can see now this is the actual deployment both the suitelet code and the object were deployed and we can verify that in the account so if i refresh the page we could see our new log 
and this should be deployed. And there we have it, a basic template for automating your uh, NetSuite deployments using GitLab CI CD and a couple of helper scripts.